bounce back around. <laughs> A couple of people got eaten by a shark in fucking near Ely oh, Beach, mate. Did you hear about that? Oh, Ely. No, I heard. No, yeah, I did hear Ely. I didn't want to tell you. I didn't want to scare you off. <laughs> <laughs> Ken's sister and her boyfriend are shitting themselves. <laughs> okay, let's go. Alrighty, guys. G'day. Welcome once again to the Tripod, where we break down every NFL game every week from a betting perspective this week. We will be going through round nine or week nine in the NFL. Before we get into the NFL for this week, uh, we do have something exciting planned for today, and Jacob can probably add on a little bit more. But um, we've organized um, a deal with Sports Champs for an, uh, a competition today for today's races. races. It is a $20 entry and a $7,500 guaranteed prize pool. Might even be more than that by the end of the day. So it's 20 bucks to enter. And the good blokes over at Sport Champs have uh, teamed up with the Tripod page. And if you do not make any money on the comp, they will refund you your $20. Um, and if you want to enter that, you'll find all the instructions in either the Tripod app or in our Facebook group, Tripod Punters Tips Forum. Have I got that relatively correct, Jacob? Yeah, that's it's good, mate. Uh, while I explain a little more, you might be able to close your window. Your friendly neighbourhood bird is uh, cheeping true. away again. True, um, true. It's a new way of punting. We've discussed it before, and in the, if you've seen in the group, I've been having a crack from time to time um, because it's a low stake but still a uh, high amount of excitement you can get from racing. It's different to betting with your own money. You need to kind of be a bit more aggressive, but you get ten thousand of the champ cap champ cash to play with and you spend it how you like usually to get you know some good prize money you need to at least get get a get hundred thousand so around 10 times your money so you want to fire off some aggressive bets here and there uh you've got the big day of racing i think derby day um it has like the most number of group ones today and um, a lot of prize money a lot of big races at stake and it's a new way of betting because it's tournament betting you're not taking on the bookie you're taking on each other so there's tactics i get i Personally, vouch you do for it. Right. it is good fun. You do all right. And like, why wouldn't you, if you've never done it before? Why wouldn't you have a crack today? Because as I was saying, it'll cost twenty dollars to get in, but you will get refunded if you don't get in the prize money. And if you're already on the platform, then you know it's a no-brainer. Have a free shot at that. And this is just the first of a couple of great promotions we're going to have. We're going to have something for Melbourne Cup Day, exclusive to Pod Family. So uh, that that post is pinned to the top of our group. So if anyone's hearing this, obviously live or anytime Saturday, you get in before about 3 or 4 p.m. this afternoon, you can swoop in and still get in the prize money, and I've done that multiple times too. And why not? It's a free crack to win, you know, thousands possibly if you win it. Um, and if you don't win, then you get your money back. What could be better? So certainly make sure you're in our group and in the app uh, and you check out that post. Nothing to lose. Um, let's get on to the games, Jacob. The early one over in London. So um, another game over in London. We've got the Texans minus two points against the Jags. 46 and a half points is the total. Um, so the Texans, good win last week over the Raiders, but got a little bit lucky in that one. Needed two fourth quarter touchdowns um, to beat the Raiders, who are actually a, a decent team, surprisingly enough, this season. Deshaun Watson gets kicked in the eye. He's bleeding everywhere, somehow escapes, and then throws an absolute dime to Darren Fells in the end zone. So um, the Texans can put up points. We know that. Um, but I think the Jags are going to be able to put up a few points in this one as well. Mustache Minshew's been playing decent this season. He's filled in all right there for Nick Foles. And, and look, this Texans defense we know is already a little bit suspect. But now on top of that, you lose J.J. Watt for the season, which is you know a pretty big blow to that Texans defense that already was struggling uh, quite a bit. Um, on top of that, uh, I do have a lean to the Jags in this one as well. Um, I think that... 
you know they've gone to they've gone to London numerous times now. They've got the experience, and I think that certainly helps um, if you've had that experience traveling over to London to play games. Whereas I think this is Houston's first game over in London, so that's a small advantage to the Jags as well. Look, I think the Jags are going to be able to put on points here against this suspect Texans D. And I do trust Deshaun Watson to be able to, to put on some points against this Jags team as well. So we like the Jags and we like the over. Yeah, I lean to the Jags as well. As you say, um, they've played in London multiple times. I think at least the last four times they've been to yes. London, they've been an underdog in all four, and they've won three of the four outright. And it is it's something that you know experience will help you in terms of how you prepare, what's the best day to travel over, the whole routine. The, there's people who have joked that they, they play better in London than they do actually in their home stadium in Florida there. So, True. you know, you're getting good experience. Yeah, that J.J. Watt, he's not the same, you know, force of nature no, that he was a few years ago. But it is a loss, especially when you traded away Jadavian Clowney before the season. So Houston really do lean on their offense. So they're going to need, you know, Deshaun to be great. And he has been this year. But we talk about he's great when he's not under pressure, not running for his life. Jacksonville, I think, like top five in QB pressure, right? So, you know, formerly known as Saxonville, and they probably still want to keep that name. But they copped a bit of an injury bug in the linebacker court. They're, um, I think, lost three different linebackers in one day of practice last week. Still able to get the job done against the Jets, which was disappointing for us because we went against the Jags last week. They got it done there. So if their defense is a little bit weakened, we know Houston's is, and we can see some points, and especially like the Jaguars and Minshew, you know, coin flip game pretty much. Probably Jags can get it done. Indeed. We've got three best bets on this one so far. We're taking the Jags to score over 22 and a half points. That one's $1.88 on Neds and Ladbrokes. All of these three bets will be on Neds and Ladbrokes. We're going to take over 46 points for the game at $1.92. And we're going to take over 22 and a half points in the first half. That is also $1.92. Uh, moving on to the Redskins, plus nine points at the Buffalo Bills. 36 and a half points is the total, the lowest total of the week. I don't mind the Bills here. I know that, you know, they got embarrassed last week against the Eagles, but I think that's not necessarily a bad thing. That was one of the better games that the, the Eagles have played all season long. So I think it's a good bounce back spot here for the Bills after being embarrassed at home last week. On the Redskins side, they are just a team... In shambles, I know that they get you know the long rest on the off the Thursday game against the Vikings. But when your team has no chance of making the playoffs, sometimes that doesn't help you as much to get that extra rest um, and extra planning and that kind of thing. Um, and Dwayne Haskins is going to be in there again for the Redskins. He looked like he was a fish out of water last week, so I expect this Bills defense, which is elite, um, to be able to get some pressure on him. Don't expect the Redskins to score too many points. I think. Um, although we rarely lay double digits, this isn't double digits, but I do think the Bills in a bounce back spot here do take care of business um, against the Skins. Yeah, I like the fact that the Bills, I think, are at least average, if not above average, and I think that they can still get in the playoffs in the AFC, but they're coming off a spanking in that they lost by 20-odds. Yeah. They got humbled by Philly last week, and I think Bills were off the bye. And then you go, you go back before that, and the Bills were like 17-point home favourites to the Dolphins and were down in the, in the third quarter there and had to fight back. So they don't want to muck around in this one. And their defence is still pretty good, definitely you know, an elite unit. The offence, you know, Allen's not a great passer, but no, he can make not. some plays with his feet. I think they can do Inaccurate. enough in this game. You don't need to score many now. The Redskins, they, as you said, are a shambles. Like, I've heard only bad things about Haskins, like... He got drafted real high, I think like the 10th pick in the draft. They didn't really have a QB, but they did sign Keenum in free agency and chose to start him. And I heard Haskins kind of not interested, not really listening at meetings, like let me know when I'm the starter kind of thing. Like I should yeah. be the man here and couldn't care less. And when he has come in, in in games either where they've benched Keenum or there's been an injury, he has looked pretty poor. So Correct. now he's going to get thrown kind of to the Wolves at Buffalo. So I'm not afraid to lay, you know, getting under the double digits. And one other thing I will add, Chris Thompson, their pass-catching running back, running back for the Redskins, is out for this game, which will certainly hurt them if they need to chase points and need to pass the ball a bit more. So we've got three best bets on this one. We are taking the Bills, minus nine points. That one is $1.87 on Unibet. All of the following bets will be on Unibet as well. We're taking the Bills team total over 22 and a half points at the dollar eighty-two. And we're going to take the Bills, minus five and a half points in the first half. That one is... $1.85. Moving on to the Titans, 
plus three and a half points at the Carolina Panthers. A low total as well, 42 points. Look, when I initially looked at this game, I thought I was going to like the Panthers here. They're coming off their worst loss of the season, 51-13 to against the 49ers. So off an embarrassing loss. So I did expect, or I do expect, a bounce-back spot here from the Panthers, who I do, I do still think are a good team. I don't necessarily think that the Titans are a good team. I think they got pretty lucky last week to get the win over the Buccaneers. Four turnovers by Jameis Winston, two interceptions and two fumbles. Um, so the spot kind of screams to me to take the Panthers, who, you know, off embarrassing loss, who I think are the better team at home. You dig a little deeper in terms of the matchups, and, you know, we know that both of these teams really like to run the ball. The Titans with Derrick Henry, the Panthers with CMC. Um, the issue is here that the Panthers have the worst rush defense in the entire league, according to DVOA, and I do trust that. Um, and the, the issue on the other side of the ball is the Titans have the second best rush defense in the league, and the Panthers love to run the ball. So the matchup is actually terrible for the Panthers, even though they're in a superior spot here. So um, that's the only thing keeping me off it. Yeah, I don't have much to add to your handicap. I also won't write off the Panthers. I think it's a good team, limited by QB, but good defense. Just got smashed, and it happens from time to time. Got destroyed by, you know, a 49er side that can be ruthless at times. So you want to take still a decent team off an embarrassing loss, especially when they're going up against a Titans team that got a phony win, as you said, and that's been the story of our tipping season because we had the Bucks plus three. We had Titans under 24 and a half. We lose both of them, and as you say, what? how many times did Jameis Winston give it away? Buccaneers dominated the statistics and had a fourth-quarter lead in that game but still blew it. But that you can't ignore those kind of matchups that both teams do want to roll on one side has a massive edge over the other and the ability to negate that. It keeps me off wanting to lay, you know, the three and a half with the Panthers at home. So I've got to pass the game. Indeed. But the next one, we do have a favorable matchup here. The Bears are plus four and a half points at the Philadelphia Eagles. 41 and a half points is the total. Jesus, this Bears team really is struggling at the moment. It is just very, very ugly to watch them play. They get an unlucky loss last week where it was like very, you know, it's so weird. They have a chance to to win the game at the end there with a field goal and, you know, they have a chance to get a couple more yards to make the field goal a little bit easier. But no, they don't even trust their running back to like make a few extra yards so they kneel and then end up missing the field goal. So an unlucky loss there for the Bears. On the flip side, we've got an Eagles team that's coming off a good win against the Bills, as we said previously. Um, So this Bears team is just coming into this just shot with no confidence whatsoever. I know they've said they're going to try and run the ball more, and that is what they they did last week. They ran the ball a shitload more than they have been previously, and that's sort of partly the fact that they they should have a a good run, run game, but also the fact that they really don't trust Mitch Trubisky. The problem is here that the Eagles' strength is their rush defense, and that's what the Bears are wanting to do more. So if the Eagles can stop the run in this one, which I think that they can, then it's going to be all on the shoulders of Mitch Trubisky, and I really do not trust him. On top of that, you know, you've got Deshaun Jackson, who who lit it up in Week 1 for the Eagles, has been pretty much out since then, um, is, is uh, moving on up from doubtful, from out to doubtful to questionable. It's looking like he's trending in the right direction to play in this one, so... Look, I think the Eagles are the superior team in this one at home. I think they get the job done. Let's not forget, this is a rematch, and there is a revenge factor here. This was the double doink game because it yes. was a wild card weekend last year. The Bears had a killer season. I think won 12 games, won their division. Philly snuck into the playoffs, wild card. Uh, Wentz was out, so it was Nick Foles. Philly was a big underdog, but got a lead. Um, you know, was going to steal that game in Chicago. Chicago did mount a drive, got down, you know, field goal range, kicked the field goal, win the playoff game, and it was the double doink, the kick that, you know, stoinked off the post and the bar and (laughs) broke a lot of hearts in Chicago. And then they made a whole deal that the whole offseason was all about finding a reliable kicker because that was not the first game they'd lost, not the first time they'd hit the post um, on important kicks. And isn't it funny, it's topical again, because as you say, they lost um, last week by, what, one or two points. Yeah, again, unreal. you miss a makeable field goal, unreal. but you can say unlucky, but you also talked about it. They did it to themselves. They got too conservative at the end. That You know, you don't want to make your kicker kick an outdoor field goal over 40 yards to win the game. Like, it's not about making it, like, it's easy. What's the definition of easy or not easy? But the probability says get a bit closer, higher probability to kick it. And they had time on the clock. And they could yep. have, you know, gone for Heaps some safe pass plays. 
will run the ball. Now, of course, there's a tiny risk. You can turn the ball over. You can right. fumble and stuff like that. But, you know, like you've got to have faith in your team to pick up a few yards. And part of it is he doesn't trust his offense. No. He doesn't trust Mitch Trubisky. Now, you I see think what, that... Sorry, you see, I was just going to interrupt there. You see what good teams like the Patriots do. There's six seconds left. Most other teams will just take the field goal six seconds left. No, the Pats trust their team enough to go bang, you know, out, pass to the outside, pick up an extra five yards, and it makes the field goal that much easier. Yeah, absolutely, because the, the defense still has to kind of play, protect the end zone and stuff like that. So it's not that hard to pick up yardage. And I just think Nagy's come in. He's meant to be a brilliant offensive mind. You've traded up. You've picked Trubisky over Mahomes and, and Watson in, in that draft. You can't be playing conservative and losing. Like, that worked last year when they played conservative and offense because the defense was so fierce and they're winning yep. games, and then no one's going to criticize you. But if you're playing conservative and losing, well, then you've got to, you know, go for broke. And on the road as an underdog, they can't go out here and play vanilla. They're going to have to say, how do we get to 20 points? They're going to have to throw the ball a bit. So that's why I think this total actually might be a little low. But I do like Philly. I think that they're getting, you know, players back, um, and they showed what they can do last week. So lean to Philly in the over. Yeah, we've got a couple of best bets on this one. We are taking the Eagles team total over 22 and a half points. You'll find that one at $1.92 on Ladbrokes and on Neds. And we're going to take Philly minus two and a half points in the first half. That one is $1.82 on Unibet. Next up, the Vikings laying two and a half points at the Kansas City Chiefs. There's no total on this one. And to be honest, there's not really a, a proper prevalent line most most um, bookies have this game off the board obviously because um, Pat Mahomes is still questionable for this one um, so we don't have a play on this one as of now but we we had two different opinions on this one Jacob so I'll share mine real quick I, everything that I'm sort of reading on Pat Mahomes is that he is trending towards playing I know they've got him as questionable at the moment but that's been upgraded from doubtful last week Everything that you're kind of hearing out of the, um, the this team is that he's looking like Pat Mahomes in practice. I guess the thing is, you know, the Chiefs really want to risk him um, and bring him back earlier if he's not 100% against this Vikings defense that can certainly create some pressure. Um, I do think that if Pat Mahomes plays, the Chiefs probably start at, you know, and he's, and he's relatively healthy. I don't think they'll bring him back if he's not. But if he's close to 100%, I think the Chiefs are probably four point five point even favorites if he's close to 100%. Um, but if he doesn't play, then the Vikings probably move to three and a half point favorites in this one. So look, this one would simply be, if I were to check, take the Chiefs in this one, this would simply be a percentage play saying that I think that Pat Mahomes has a greater than not the greater than 10% chance of playing, which is basically what the line is telling me now. But um, you would you would be inclined to take take the Vikings in this one, Sackham. And that's just because I like the Vikings. And if Mahomes ends up playing, I'll still give the Vikings a chance. And this is the thing. It's hard enough for us to sit here and predict how these games are going to be oh, with the number yeah. of variables, let alone this. And that's why we won't have a play because we're saying if, if. Like, right. we've got the two different equations. One is Mahomes either will play or won't play. No one knows for sure, or maybe the organization yeah. does, but we don't, right? So it's like a percentage. You've got to try and figure out from all the information, will he play? My instinct Yes, he will play. They said he could have played last week had it been a playoff game, which is surprising because the original prognosis on the injury oh, was yeah. like, what, three, four, four weeks, even up to yeah. six weeks, right? So it's a good comeback. But he was skipping around the sideline, so I think he can play. There's still a chance. He might not, though. Then if he plays, of course, what percentage capability is he? Is he going to have his escapability right. in the pocket? Is he going to play it a bit more safe, like not run for any first downs, like throw it away a bit more quickly because you don't want to risk re-injury? So there's a lot of variables there. But I will say, with the line saying currently favoring the Vikings in a couple of locations, like Unibet and a couple other bookies, yeah, I think it's, do yeah, have the it's Vikings um, minus two and a half. So you're getting plus two and a half. <laughs> if you like the Chiefs in this game, and it's worth saying, they played quite well against the Packers last week. Matt Great. Moore looked good. He does have a good head coach on offense and some good weapons. And hey, that was that game was what, like 28 all, 24 all in the fourth yeah, quarter. Yeah. So if you like the Chiefs and you think Mahomes will play, I'll grab that plus two and a half right now. But because I think, yeah, because if it was against anyone that I didn't really like, I'd be doing that equation. But I think what could end up happening, you could have a less than 100% Pat Mahomes and the right. Vikings could still cover this line. So with, until we know, I can't make a play on the game. Yeah, and that's fair enough. We like to kind of make plays when we have a bit more information 
than that. Next up, we got the Jets laying three points at the Miami Dolphins. 42 and a half points is the total. This should be a pretty ugly game. The Jets have been average now, but I mean, you've had Darnold back for a few weeks now. I get that, you know, he's had a couple of rough games against, um, you know, the Jags last week. He didn't look great, but I expect him to, to get better as the season kind of progresses. That's only, what, three games that he's had back now since uh, he's he's got he got mono. Um, on the Dolphins side, geez, um, I know we've said, you know, obviously from a, you know, management perspective, they do want to lose these games. And they were up 14-0 against the Steelers on Monday night. They end up losing the game. And, and look, you know, some of the play calling you could say was questionable in order to lose that one. The thing about the Dolphins is, you know that they want to lose these games, or upper management definitely wants them to lose these games. So you can feel confident kind of taking them with a big spread like against the Steelers, because they can kind of play hard and, and still lose the game and look respectable. But in this one here with the short line, I do expect the Jets to be improved on last week. Um, Le'Veon Bell's come out and said, you know, you've got to feed me the ball more, and they really should be using him more than they have been. It has been difficult because they've been down in most games, in which case, you know, you can't really use the running back. But I expect the Jets to be able to run on this Dolphins team that has the worst rush defense or the second worst rush defense in the league. Um, so I expect the Jets to, to get the win here and laying the short number... Um, I'm confident enough to do that. Yeah, let's recap the Jets' season. So you're up 16-0 in Week 1. Happy days. But then you blow the game 17-16. Then your starting QB has mono. You lose the next three games. Not just that. You lose them horribly. Yep. You look terrible. But, oh, it's because we didn't have our QB. Okay. I thought Adam Gase, who they hired after he was fired by Miami. Why are you <laughs> hiring a coach that a shit team fired? I wonder. But anyway... You know, couldn't he do anything with the offense? I've seen other teams do okay with the backup QB, not the Jets. Then they threw everyone off the scent. In Darnold's first game back, they played well, and they beat the Cowboys, who, you know, people respect. So everyone thought, oh, it's all good now. Darnold's back, and, you know, and this team has some free agent additions. Now we've got to fear them. Then they were terrible against the Pats and terrible last week against the Jags. So now what do you make of the Jets? I'll give them one more chance. I think there's a lot of pressure. We talk about how it's heightened in New York, and against a Dolphins team that, you know, yeah, there's conflicting kind of um, motivations. Sure, the players on the field don't want to be part of a winless season, and there's got to be some talk in that locker room, and that uh, their coach, Flores, is a new coach. What do you, you don't want to be a new coach and go, oh, and 16. Right. Like, he looks passionate on the sidelines. Like, it's he did try hard. hard. Yeah, he is putting his body on the line. And look, they did shoot themselves in the foot massively against... The Steelers that you talk about, like a third and 20 play where they blitz eight players and give up a touchdown That's right so at the end bad. of the half so when they bad. were winning 14-3, it turned into 14-10 and then you knew the Steelers would be okay and recover. But bad teams do that too. I'm not going to say like they were throwing the game. But I just feel a little bit more safe like there's no home advantage when you've got a team that's terrible and the fans are embarrassed to show up. So minus three is pretty cheap. I'll give the Jets one more chance. Indeed we will. We're going to take the Jets Laying three points flat. That one is a dollar ninety-three on Bet Easy, and we're going to take the Jets to score over twenty-two and a half points. You'll find that one on Ladbrokes and on Neds for a dollar eighty-eight. Uh, next up, we got the Colts minus one. Well, that's not minus one anymore. It's basically pick 'em. The Colts pick 'em at the Steelers. Forty-two and a half points is the total. The Colts got a super lucky win last week against the Broncos. Once again, should have lost that one. Jacoby Brissett, they're in their own fucking end zone, basically. He's about to get sacked. They're down, what, one point or two points, I think, um, with about 45, 50 seconds left. He escapes like two sacks and throws an absolute pearl at a T.Y. Hilton on the sideline, and they end up driving and getting the game-winning field goal. So, a bit of a lucky win there for the Colts. We talked about what the Steelers did last week, came back from 14 zip down to beat the Dolphins. Um... The thing is about this Colts team, yes, Jacoby Brissett's been decent, but he has been leaning on T.Y. Hilton a lot. And T.Y. Hilton is out for three to four weeks now with the calf injury. That news just came out last night. And that's why the line has shifted from the Colts minus one to pick him basically now. And the Steelers are favorites in some places. But look, I would say that he's probably, he's one of those receivers that it could be even worth more than that that one point. And that's a fairly meaningless one point that they've moved it from as well, from the Colts minus one to pick. Um, it's a good matchup here in terms of the Steelers. The Steelers do like to run the ball a lot, and the Colts can defend the pass, but they are the third worst 
rush defense in the league. So I expect the Steelers to be able to run on the Colts. And the Steelers have some belief now. They're only 3-4 and four after that win over the Dolphins. And that's not completely... Your season is not done at 3-4. and four. Sure, if they lost the Dolphins, it would be. But 3-4, and four, you win this one at home. You know, you get to 4-4. Four and four And um, playoffs are, are certainly still in the equation here. So... Look, at home, fairly strong home home field advantage for the Steelers with the Colts missing their best receiver. Um, I think they could get the job done, even though I still believe that the Colts are the slightly better team here. Yeah, like the Steelers season is over in the sense that they've been a you know a contender or semi-contender for the last you know decade or 15 years. And right. once they lost Roethlisberger and you're handing the, the keys over to Mason Rudolph, it's going to be tough. But this is a proud organization. Tomlin's been there a long time, never had a losing record. So there's a lot of pride in this team like whether they do get nine or ten wins and get sneak into the playoffs or finishing eight and eight after you've got to remember they were 0 and four, that means something to them. And we've spoken about the fact that they traded next year's first round pick to upgrade with Minka Fitzpatrick. You don't do that unless you have faith that you're going to finish the season strong and you're all in on this season. And yep. they have historically rarely an underdog at home. So, yep. you know, do they get some motivation? Although, as you say, it's a flipped favorite slightly now. Slightly, but, like, yeah. they were starting this week as a home underdog. And talk about T.Y. Hilton. Like, people don't realize, go back and look at the stats of, you know, I think he's got, like, more catches than anybody else in the last seven years, apart from maybe Antonio Brown. Like, he, people know he's good, but probably don't know how important he is to them. And it's not just his production. You take him off the field, and it takes away a threat that the defense has their eyes on. Right. So he's a guy that spreads the field. So that's why it is significant. And I really like the Steelers' defense. I like, yeah, you know, I've said like I like the way they drafted and that they're building around a young group, and they get after it. They were down 14 nil on Monday night. They didn't give up another point um, after you know Fitzpatrick kind of shocked them early. So I think they can win this game with defense. So we do like lean to the Steelers at home. Yeah, taking a kind of strange bet here. We're taking a mechanical Steelers to win. With insurance, it ends up being $1.83. The way you're going to do it is you're going to put 58% of your stake on the Steelers plus three points. That one is $1.70 on Unibet. And 42% of your stake on the Steelers to win. That is $1.97 on Unibet as well. I am getting a question through here from Lachlan. And yes, you are right. It doesn't exactly make sense. Um, you're not going to get your money back uh, if, if the Steelers lose by three points. Essentially, how this one works is if the Steelers do win uh, the game, you win. If the Steelers lose by one or two points, then you get your money back. And if the Steelers lose by three points, you basically get partial money back. You're getting about 25% of your stake back. So that's No, how... you're getting 58% of your stake back because the 58% will push. Oh, you're right, you're right. So you're getting, well, yeah, essentially like, yeah, you're right, you're right. 58% of your stake back. So I hope that has explained that one to you relatively well enough. They're um, both good value plays, like plus well, three yeah, at $1.70, play and to win at $1.97, you can't get that at any other bookies, so they're both good yeah, plays. Yeah, you would play both of them individually. I think they're both very good plays as well. Yep. Um, moving on to the Lions, plus two and a half points at the Raiders. 50 points is the total. Um, I like the over in this one, and I like the Raiders, and there's a few reasons. I think the Raiders got awful unlucky to lose that game last week against the Texans. I thought that they were the better team for the majority of the game. It took a miracle from Houston to win that one, as we explained to Sean Watson, escaping out of the pocket, getting a fucking cleat in his eye, bleeding, throws a touchdown pass. The Raiders have been good. Their defense hasn't been good, but their offense has been good. They're running the ball well with Josh Jacobs, and Derek Carr has actually been playing... Decent football. They've found a gem in Darren Waller. So I think that the Raiders are going to be able to put up some points in this one. The Lions, on the other hand, um, the defense isn't great for this Lions team. And for a team that wanted to run the ball a shitload to start the season, they're certainly not doing that anymore after losing on Johnson. So they're, they're putting it all on Matt Stafford's back. So I expect the Lions to pass the ball a fair bit more down the stretch of the season. Um, so I think that coming into this one, these teams are fairly... Fairly comparable, um, but I think that the Raiders are going to be able to put up some points on this Lions team. So that's why we've got uh, a, a Raiders over or some sort of derivative of that as the best bet. Yeah, I think I do like the Raiders. You have to respect what they're doing. And yeah, it's not a good defensive team, but on offense, they're getting it done. They're, they've uh, overachieved in a lot of games this year, and you've got to give credit to Gruden. And maybe there is a reason why he got he's on ten million a season as a coach. Um, <laughs> even though, you know, you didn't have a lot of confidence in hard knocks. I've I've even questioned it like, did they deliberately, you know, 
almost want to be seen as a little bit of a shambles and didn't mind showing a little bit of the turmoil because people would underestimate like. them. And then it's more impressive the results that they've put up. The Lions are a bit all over the place too. They did get the win. They didn't cover last week. We had the Giants plus seven. And it was a close-ish game, Like although the Giants actually needed a backdoor touchdown to cover there. We had our question marks about the Lions after they traded their defensive captain, Diggs. You know, the Lions, a side that plays in a dome, to come outdoor and play on a shitty, like, baseball field, Such a um, field. against Oakland. Like, I don't know if they're going to put up a heap of points. That's my only concern with the total. But I agree, like, directionally that you've got two good offenses. You've got Lions you have to throw, lean on their receivers a lot more. And Raiders can't really stop the pass. So I like that. And with the Raiders, I'd be tempted to just play them minus two and a half. Only thing that keeps me off them is a murderer's row in terms of travel. They've been on the road for five straight weeks. That includes a game in London. And I know you could say they're home now so they can rest. But you wonder if those like kind of um, rigors, like will like um, the fatigue will build up a little bit now. Like maybe they need a week or two at home to regain equilibrium, if that makes sense. So, no, you, you make a good yeah. point because like not only that, like, um, being on the road for multiple weeks in a row kind of drains you. But on top of that, like, you're on the road for a month and, you know, you, you, you come back home and everyone wants to, you know, you're back home for a week, you, you know, your family, your kids, you gotta catch they all up with everyone. Fucking... you got to catch up with your, your wife, you got to catch up with your mistress. Yeah, like... exactly right, exactly right. And they might not even live in the same city. So, look, the only bet we've got on this one as of now is the Raiders to score over 12 points in the first half. That one is $1.88 on Ladbrokes and Neds. And that's a, a not only because we like the Raiders and the over, but a bit of a market play as well. Because everywhere else, they are 13 and a half. And 13 points is a fairly key number, especially in the first half. Um, moving on to the Buccaneers, plus five points at the Seattle Seahawks. 52 and a half points is the total. Look, I looked at this game initially and I, I said to myself, look, you have to take the Seahawks here, right? The Seahawks are the better team. They are at home. And they have a very strong home field advantage. Uh, Seahawks have one of the stronger home field advantages in the league, along with teams like, you know, the Patriots and stuff like that. So generally speaking, people think that the Seahawks um, home field is worth four points. Um, they get the win over the Falcons last week, which was probably a little bit of a phony seven point win. They absolutely dominated the Falcons last week. Um, but in terms of the Buccaneers, they are not a terrible team here. I know that they lost to the Titans last week. And yes, we were on the Bucs. But look, James Winston by himself has four turnovers, two interceptions, two fumbles recovered by the Titans. So they lose the turnover battle 4-zip, or 4-1 maybe it was, and they still only lose by less than one score. Um, and what really kept me off this one, or I would have probably played the Bucks, even though the plus five, I, I would have wanted a six. Um, but what kept me off definitely taking the Seahawks is just the matchup here as well. I mean, we're, we're through nine weeks of the season now, and statistically, the Bucks still have the best, the best rush defense in the league. And the Seahawks, what do they want to do? All they want to do is run the ball. They're the second run heaviest team in the league. I understand that Russell Wilson is, is out of his skin, but the, the, the Seahawks' MO is that they want, to be, they want to run the ball and establish the run. So I don't think they're going to be able to run the ball on the Bucks as well as you can for, with other teams. Um, I think the Bucks are going to be able to get theirs against the Seahawks, who are not an elite defense anymore they're in the bottom half uh defensively this year so um yeah as of now no plays but we kind of lent to to different teams i had a slight lean to the bucks and jacob you had a slight lean to the seahawks yeah and on the buck side of things i actually like them as well i think they are undervalued i already talked about how they outplayed tennessee last week on the road and they should have won but they didn't but part of that is bad luck and part of that is they can't protect the football Jameis winston i think has 10 oh. turnovers in the last two weeks so while turnovers can be a bit fluky, like a fumble here or there, or even some intercepts when a ball gets tipped is fluky, like at some point, you know, Jameis Winston throws more intercepts than a Tom Brady. Like it's yeah, not all yeah. luck as well. Like 100%. Um, that's the way he plays. Whereas Russell Wilson, I think, has the least intercepts of all starting QBs. You know, I like so. he, I think he has one this season. So And he's playing MVP level. So I like the Seahawks. And as you mentioned, I think they do have a home field worth four points. So to take the Bucks plus five, you'd have to at least be able to argue to me the Bucks are an equal team to Seahawks, if not slightly better, because we're risking 11 bucks to win 10. So we've got to have an edge somewhere, and I can't quite see that edge with the Buccaneers. I look at the Seahawks, as you said, like they got outgained by 
the Falcons last week, but they were up two or three touchdowns in that game and they got massively backdoored. They were up 16 points with like four minutes to go, only win the game by seven. So people might think it was a close-ish win. It wasn't. It was a comprehensive win. True. The week before that, people are underrating the Seahawks as well because they got smashed essentially by the Ravens. Uh, yeah, but I mean, there's a pick six in that game by Russ and there's Lamar, Lamar Jackson, Jackson playing out of this world. He was a joke. So if you lose a game to like a, you know, a young superstar QB who has... One of the greatest games I've ever witnessed. I'm not going to, you know, degrade you too much. They've played other For sides sure. like the Rams who've put up a few points. I still trust the Seahawks defense. I think they're going to get after Jameis. So, but you make a case that there's not enough value to fade an underrated Buccaneers side. So therefore, we don't have a play on the game. Correct. And let's move on to Cleveland Browns laying four points at the Denver Broncos. 39 points is the total. Browns have probably been one of, if not the most disappointing team uh, you know, of the season. A lot of people kind of had the Browns, you know, to win the Super Bowl this year, and that certainly hasn't panned out. But look, we like them in this spot. Not only because I know that you lose to the Pats last week, you only have a non-cover by, you know, a point and a half, but you lose the turnover battle 3-0, and, you know, all three of those turnovers led to points eventually, especially that horrific one where, you know, um, it was a shovel pass just straight to the Pats' defense. Very, very strange. Um, on the flip side, the Broncos have, like we talked about um, with the Indianapolis game, the Broncos have just an absolutely brutal, brutal loss last week against the Colts. You have the lead late, you have Jacoby Brissett scrambling, and you get just another unlucky loss. So I wonder if that is the dream-crushing loss to the Broncos, and if they come out a little bit flat in this one. So um, we've got, you know, the, the Browns coming in a little bit underrated after losing to the Pats and just having a horrific performance, but still coming pretty close to covering. And you have a good matchup here too. The Broncos' secondary is strong, but their rush defense isn't great. And really, what the Browns want to do is feed Nick Chubb, and that's what I think they'll be able to do in this one. So, look, Browns get um, get back on the right track here, maybe get their season back back on track and uh, and get the win here. And after a lot of hype, and they hyped themselves up too, you know, with Freddie Soup Kitchen coming in saying, like, you know, losing's not acceptable here anymore. You know, we're going to turn this things around. Um, you know, we've got the, the talent to do it. They kind of dug their own grave, and they've been disappointing in a lot of games. Um, but I still think, you know, the risk is with the Browns that, like, have they lost confidence? Do they now kind right. of know they're not as good as they thought? I think when you played the Patriots at Foxborough and you had, like, the same amount of yards, it's just you turned the ball over – Three straight offensive plays. Yeah, Literally three straight plays on offense was turnovers, each answered by points. And we had the Pats under their team total and still cashed it. Yeah, That shows you that actually Cleveland's defense was good and it wasn't the problem. And they've gotten Greedy Williams and Denzel Ward back on defense. And we should mention, and his name escapes me, but uh, obviously Flacco is out. Brandon so Allen. We have Brandon Allen starting his first ever NFL start. And I think this Cleveland team's a bully. I think you don't trust them when they're playing the good teams like the Rams or the, you know the Seahawks or the Pats, but they're probably a bit like the Bills that when they do get an edge and they get their tails up, they actually probably could spank the Broncos here, and then they'll be all cocky again and oh, you all the media wrote us off. We yeah. knew we're still good, and they'll act like they they've got something to be proud of, and they're getting Denver at a great time. You talk about a gut wrenching loss, another yes. game where Denver had it won, and the other team makes a very improbable you know last ditch drive and kicks a winning field goal against them. So I know that Browns have let punters down multiple times this year because they were overhyped and overvalued. This is the week where you, I think, and I really like them, you lay the points on the road, and I think they will come through. I think the absolute must-win for them, and they'll get it done. Yeah, and we should just mention with the uh, with the QB situation in uh, with the Broncos, as much as people like to heap shit on Joe Flacco, and he is a below-average starting, quarter, starting quarterback... Like, it's still a downgrade to Brandon Allen, um, as bad as Flacco's been. Like, the, you know, how many starts it, has Flacco got? I, like, I'm only guessing, like, oh, obviously, yeah. I don't know, 200? Yeah, exactly. And Well, the thing is, even if you brought in, like, uh, a backup quarterback that they had high hopes on, you know, like, let's say it was Minshew coming in um, for Nick Foles, it's yeah. still a giant downgrade. But by all accounts, this Brandon Allen is actually a bad, bad uh, backup. So... Um, we are we are flying with the Browns here with the most bets bets we've had on a game all season. Four of them. We're going to take the Browns laying three and a half points. That one is a dollar eighty nine on Unibet. 
We're going to take the Browns laying two and a half points in the first half. That is $1.85 on Unibet. We're going to take the Browns team total over 20 and a half points. That is $1.80 on Unibet. We're going to take the Broncos team total under 17 and a half points. That is $1.88 on both Ladbrokes and on Neds. Next up, the Packers laying three and a half points at the LA Chargers. 48 and a half points is the total. Well, the Packers get the win over the Chiefs last week, and it was kind of disappointing. We were talking about this, Jacob. Like, you had a great, a great situation. Aaron Rodgers coming off six touchdowns, five throwing, one rushing uh, the week before. It set up perfectly for an awesome game against Pat Mahomes. Would have been the game of the year almost, the way that the build-up was and the way the Packers played the week before, but it wasn't to be. Um, they still get the win. They still cover, actually, um, by seven points in Kansas City. Um, they get the win by seven points. So the Packers have been, they've been good. And um, look, they, they ha it looks like they haven't really missed Devontae Adams. They still have, to be fair. But look, the word on Devontae Adams is he is close. He's close to coming back. I don't know if they're going to play him or not in this one. They've said they're going to make a decision about 90 minutes prior to kickoff. Uh, on the Chargers side, finally, the Chargers MO for the last like three years has just been having horrifically close losses. Um, sometimes due to like bad kickers that they had a couple of years back. Um, but they finally get a lucky win last week or a close win against the Bears. So I think they will get some confidence from that. Keenan Allen is healthy. He's off the injury report now. The Chargers are coming into this one with a little bit of confidence off that win. I know that they don't have much home field advantage, um, and there, you know, there might be more Packers uh, there, but it's certainly, like you said earlier, Jacob, it's it's better than playing at Lambeau Field, that's for sure. So, look at home with a bit of confidence, a bit of wind in their sail. I think that the Chargers can can hang tight in this one. Yeah, like I really like Packers this year, and the unknown was going to be how the effect of Matt Lafleur, but they'd been so unimaginative with McCarthy that right. I was optimistic that you know, a new change, a young you know, aggressive play caller coming in would do Rogers a world of good. And he has been reinvigorated. And um, even without Devonta Adams, who, like, I'm, off the top of my head, I don't think – people might not realise how good he is. I don't think Rogers has ever had a receiver as good as Devonta Adams. No. I mean, go back years, maybe it got Greg Jennings, like, a decade ago. But um, the, he makes a big difference. But if he plays, he He's may still be a bit hampered. He's dudes called Lizard. Fucking Lizard. Yeah. Yeah, like, and a great QB can make anyone look good, but it helps to have an actual stud out there to throw to. And, it, yeah, that's that's up in the air. I've spoken multiple weeks about how the Chargers are missing Melvin Ingram. He got back last week. They do get the win, which is lucky, and a team that is accustomed to losing heartbreaking style yes. to actually be on the other side of the ledger. I think they'll come in confident. You're getting quite a few points for a home team. Now, the Chargers, nobody in L.A. They were the San Diego Chargers, if people don't know. A couple of years ago, got moved to Carson, um, just outside Los Angeles, right, and they're playing a soccer stadium. No one comes out and cheers for them. No. It's routine that they'll play a game and there'll be more opposing fans because if you're a Pittsburgh fan or you're a Green Bay fan, hey, let's go have a trip to California, right. you know, for the weekend and let's go watch the game. So, And they get pissed off about that, um, that the crowd, you know, is not even in their favor, but they're kind of used to that. So they don't get any home advantage, but still... At least it's, you know, that you don't have to travel. It's not a road game. And this Chargers team is still close to the same personnel for the side that won like 13 games last yeah, year. Yeah. So we, they don't have to win at plus three and a half, but I think they can make this an entertaining game. Indeed. And we've got a couple of best bets on this one. We are taking the Chargers plus four points for the game. That is a dollar eighty-three on Unibet. I'm going to take the Chargers plus three points in the first half. That one is a dollar eighty-three on bet365 now we get to the game of the round the patriots laying three points at the baltimore ravens 45 points is the total this one should be an absolute cracker and as good as the pats have been they're eight and oh now um eight no they really and, and the one knock on them is i know that they've taken care of business that they've that you can only beat what's in front of you but the knock on the patriots is that they haven't really played anyone great. Arguably, the, the Browns were the best team they've played on the schedule. Or at, so at far. Bills. At Bills, maybe, yeah, as A few well. weeks ago. Yeah, that's true. Um, so this is going to be the best team that they've played so far this season. Should be an absolute cracker. One thing that I have said about the Pats, not only the easy schedule, but I have said that these fucking defensive scores and these winning the turnover battle... 
I understand that the Patriots defense is elite. Um, it's, you know, arguably the best in the league. But even in saying that, it's unsustainable to get one, two, you know, defensive scores every fucking game. It's it's unsustainable to win the turnover battle 3-0 like last week. So, look, I expect the Ravens to, to be decent here. They've had two weeks to prep for this one off the bye. Um, and look, what do the Ravens like to do? They like to run the ball, not only with Ingram, but Lamar Jackson as well. And look, you can run on this Patriots team. Although the, the Browns lost, you know, by 14 points last week, um, you know, Nick Chubb still had over 130 yards rushing. So you can actually run on this Pats defense a little more than you can pass on it. And that is what the Ravens want to do. Um, so certainly I'd lean Ravens in this one, especially with the Patriots coming in with, uh, a few people, a few more people than normal banged up. I know, obviously, Rex Burkhead's been out for a couple of weeks. He's questionable for this one. Um, it's fine. you got two running backs, but now James White's popped up on the injury report. Edelman's popped up on the injury report. So um, I would be inclined to take the Ravens in this one, but I really wanted three and a half, and that's just not available anymore. Yeah, I think we said before the game, you still, if you had to play the game and you were getting $2 odds, you'd take Ravens plus three. I would, I would. I would take Pats minus three. So, of course, I'd love minus two and a half. You'd love plus three and a half. (laughs) But we probably don't know neither of us has a 60% side in this one. At least that's the way I see it. You talk about defense, you know, turnovers not being sustainable. So, you're not just saying that for no reason. People can look back historically and look, take any season that a defense has forced a high number of turnovers right. and then look if they did it the next year. And it, it does seem to be very random that if if it was more than random, teams would be able to sustain it for multiple seasons. Whereas like offense, offensive stats tend to stay a bit more consistent where defenses right. sometimes do. Yeah, it is so variable. variable. But in saying guess, that, yeah. like <laughs> it's not a fluke though because the defense, like the Pats defense has oh. a great defensive line, creates pressure on the QB means more errant throws, right? The cornerbacks, they've got Gilmore, is probably the best in the league. Like, you're getting better coverage, so you're closer to, to, to catch the ball, basically. Yep. You're forcing fumbles, even technique. You look at Nick Chubb broke one last week and then was thinking about scoring, and they came behind him. Yes. And it's a very punch deliberate that. action to punch the ball out. Like, So they are well coached. And on top of that, they're usually winning. The other team has to right. take more risks to catch up. So there's lots of reasons. We're not surprised when they win the turnover battle, but your point is... They're winning it like by three or four turnovers, oh. which is historic. You can't keep a historic rate going. So that's a classic, you know, regression to the mean that we expect. But I look at this game and I see Patriots defense is legit. Yes. No question about it. You played shitty QBs. You played shitty offenses for the most part. But what you've done to them, you've proven this is like a once in a, I don't know, every two or three seasons quality of defense, right? Yeah. Can the Baltimore move the ball against them? Well, I think Lamar has to have a game similar to what he produced at Seattle. Uh, and I think that Belichick is the kind of coach that will be able to negate what L- like Lamar Jackson wants to do. Belichick knows how to take away you know, your first option and make you kind of play left-handed. All right, So I think the Pats can slow down the Ravens. And then the Ravens' um, defense is probably the, what will determine this game. And I don't think they're that great. I know that they, they've gone right, well the last couple of weeks. Um, they traded for Marcus Peters. He gets a pick six in his first game. So people probably think, and historically they've been a good defense. I don't think they're that great this year. And the Pats offense, while there's a few guys questionable, you know, you let's not they traded for Muhammad Sanu. They hold things back sometimes when they are a big favorite. I think they can score in this game. So I'll kind of give an edge both sides of the ball to the Patriots. Therefore, justifiably, I think they are a field goal favorite on the road. And that's why I lean to the Pats. Indeed, and that's why we do not have a play on this one. It's a similar story for the Monday night game. The Cowboys laying seven points at the New York Giants. 48 points is the total. Didn't have a huge like on this game, but it certainly leaned the Giants. It just seems like a full touchdown at home is probably a few too many points. I think that the Giants you know, were probably the better team for most of the game against the Lions last week, but they dug themselves into a 14-0 hole you know, in the first quarter, and it's always kind of tough to dig your way out of that one. So I think the Giants are a a decent team around that sort of average to slightly below average sort of level. Both defenses are, you know, below average as well. I know the Cowboys get a lot of credit for having this good D, but they really haven't been that, that so much this year. And we all know that you can score points 
on this Giants team. I guess the one thing that I worry about is that the Cowboys have, you know, max confidence after, you know, they lost three games in a row and then they just absolutely lit up the Eagles um, two weeks ago. And now you come off the bye, so you have a bit of extra time to prep. Um, the one good thing from the Giants side is you get Sterling Shepard back, and that's been their kind of worry. They have, haven't had, you know, all their receivers back all season long, but so now you get, you know, a full complement of your wideouts and stuff for this game. So, look, although we have no play on the game, I, I certainly would have a lean to the Giants, and you would have a lean the other way, Jacob. Yeah, so why I disagree, I probably don't disagree with your assessment of the Giants. I think, you know, Danny Dimes versus Eli, I think it's an upgrade because it brings energy and it's a new era. Um, he's got his deficiencies. He's not perfect. He's a rookie. Right. But at least, he, you know, he's not afraid to throw the ball downfield. They didn't have all their wide receivers. There was no one to throw to in the first, like, month of the season. But now, you know, and Stan Stafford got uh, Sterling, Sterling Shepard. Yes. Got it injured. He's back, right? Um, we've spoken about Tate. Um, yep. Saquon Barkley was injured. He's back. So, like, okay, let's say the, the Giants are a blow average team. But what I disagree with, I mean, you said that Cowboys aren't a good defense. I'd say they've, they've got to be an above-average defense. I like this Cowboys team. So let me make my case why the Cowboys are better than people think. You win three games comprehensively to start the year, and everyone's saying, like, they're going to win their division, they, they can make the Super Bowl. Then everyone wrote them off after losing three in a row. But you lost 12-10 at the Saints. Don't we all know the Saints are a legit team? Right. I know it was no breeze, and at the time, people didn't think much of it. But the Saints didn't lose without Breeze. So, like, that was a coin flip game. Lost pretty badly at home, but to the Packers, who are 7-1. and one. So, yep. again, is it forgivable? And then lost to the Jets, and that's the game that was three in a row, and people were already nailing the coffin close and calling for Garrett to get sacked and everything. But they lost two offensive linemen, you know, inactive for that game. Cobb was out, and then Amari Cooper got hurt first quarter. And they still come within a two-point conversion. So I think that was and you cluster have like injuries a on offense. And you like a 98-yard touchdown. Yeah, and, and like, like stopped on fourth down, things like that. So then everyone's flipped the script and wants to criticize the Cowboys. And people think more about that loss to the Jets than they do about giving credit to, what, like a 21-point win against the Eagles on Sunday Night Football? Oh, so I think like 27, but yeah. Yeah, so, so like if you take out the Jets' loss, you can actually say the Cowboys have had a pretty bloody good year, yes. just lose a couple of close ones. So, so I'm still going to say that the Cowboys are a quality team that is expecting to make the playoffs, should be too good for the Giants. Giants are not historically strong at home. I liked the Cowboys when they were minus seven at the Jets. I don't think the Giants are much better than the Jets, so I I can agree with why this line is a full touchdown. Uh, I think the Cowboys will win, not that I would lay the seven, but that's my reasoning for kind of just being on the other side of it. Yeah, for sure, and all things taken into account, what it probably means is that the seven is right and that the bookies have got it right. And look, most of the time, or you know, some of the time, that happens. They get it right, and that's our job to, to distinguish when the line is correct and when it's a little bit off. So we have... A few best bets in there for you guys. As always, we will be uh, releasing multis over the weekend for the NFL and obviously some NBA as well. We've started giving out a few uh, multis for the NBA. Look, we can't give out best bets on the NBA every day. There's just too many games, too much stuff to get through. But look, when we see some value, we'll give it out mostly in the form of like a same game multi or something like that that you can use your promos on. We have been doing, although the best bets are you know, hovering a little over 40%, we have been making up some of that loss uh, with some profit in our multi. So we hope that that will continue throughout the weekend. I'm going to leave uh, Jacob pretty much in charge. I'm on holidays from about uh, two, two and a half hours time. I'll be out of here for a week, but I will be back for next week's podcast. Jacob, anything else you want to add? It's a big weekend of sport this week before we get out of here. Yeah, no, have a, have a great trip, mate. Don't get eaten by a shark. Um, not to. We've, yeah, the multis have gone well, but I think the best bets will bounce back this week. I, I feel really good about the card. I mean, Rugby World Cup final on tonight True. and a triple header rugby league. Let's not forget, that's our fundamentals. Yes. And most people that follow us might have found out about us from league. Samoa, Fiji, England, Great, uh, Great Britain, New Zealand, Australia, mm. Tonga, triple header from Auckland this Crackers. afternoon. And races, um, derby day, as I said before. And if you're hearing this a little later in the day, let me tell you, as someone who's come in and won a lot of those racing tournaments, you, you, have, don't, actually, need, you, you have. don't need to... Um, a, allow your full day to bet on it you literally can say i'm going to sit in front of the tv for an hour hour and a half and i'm going to bet you know the next five or six races in a row and as i said you've got to get aggressive you're going to have to put your you know your balance on a horse and then maybe lay the winnings into the next one a couple of times and it's kind of all or nothing because right. you know you're risking 20 but there's thousands to be won so you've got to 
you don't make an omelette without breaking some eggs. So That's if you're true. hearing this later in the day, have a crack. Even if you lose, you get your 20 back, as we said exactly. at the start of this show. So we'll be in there competing with you guys. Even you can just chuck be on there. some bets before you jump on your flight. So, I will. I will. Um, and right now, we, as much as the races have started and all the footies kicking off the Savo, we'll be um, cooking up some multis for you, which you'll find in the Tripod app, of course, as always. Indeed, guys. So, yeah, like Jacob said, make sure you've downloaded the Tripod app. That's where you'll find all the best bets. We'll post them now if you missed any in the pod and all of the multis. Make sure you're in our Facebook group, Tripod Punters Tips Forum, for all the Rugby League, Rugby Union, Horse Day, NFL threads. Uh, get in that group. And, um, look, hopefully a bounce back round for us this week, and we will catch you same time next week, Saturday, 10 a.m., uh, after what is hopefully a, a winning round. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you then.